Hey, this is Chris Hammond with ChrisStock.com. Welcome back to my DNN tutorials. It has been well over a year since I recorded my last tutorial. For that, I apologize, but I'm back. I got some new toys. Got a new green screen behind me. I got this old uh, microphone, old camera, and some desktop controls that I can do some fancy transitions here with the video. And I'm putting my face on these videos for the first time. If you've been to a, a DNN conference for the in the past, I don't know, 15 or 20 years, you've probably seen me before. Uh, but if you don't, if you've only watched my videos online, uh, I believe this is the first time I've uh, included my face in any of the videos. So I'll be trying this out going forward. Let me know what you think of that uh, as I uh, try to make it a little more personal here within the, the videos. Uh, to get back in action, I'm just going to do a video tonight on um, just some basic database maintenance within a, a DNN website. I'm going to keep it super simple, try to keep the video short, but it's my first time back. Probably going to talk for a while. Let me go ahead and uh, jump right in, though. So I'm going to go over here to my uh, my development environment. Uh, I already have Microsoft SQL Server Management Studio installed. What I'm going to go ahead and do is uh, connect to my database engine. Now I can connect to my local database if I want to work in my local development environment. But for tonight, I'm going to actually connect to uh, a production database for my personal website at chrishammond.com. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the connect option. SSMS will go out and connect to that uh, SQL Server within the Azure environment where it's hosted. And assuming it speeds up here, you'll see on the left, I'll get a, uh, a database connection and information about the, uh, the databases that are running on that SQL server. Or it'll just freeze up on me and I have to start the video over after it comes back. We'll see what happens here if uh, SSMS connects or not. There it goes. Not going to have to make that edit. You get to see all of my... Uh, all of my glory here as the videos uh, <laughs> hopefully hopefully work out. Uh, so over here on the left, I'm going to go ahead and expand the databases folder there. Underneath of that, I've got my Chris Hammond DNN database. So I'm going to go ahead and expand into that. And what you'll see inside of there is a tables folder, which will have all of the DNN tables and any other modules or other tables. Uh, or, or sorry, any other tables that modules or even other extensions have installed within my uh, within my database over the many years that it's been running DNN. So you can see there's a lot of different tables in there. So basic maintenance, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and uh, just show you a couple SQL statements that I use when I uh, want to look at the kind of the, the health and the, the size of my database. So first thing I'll do is I'll run a store procedure called get all table sizes. Now, you will not have that store procedure out there in your local database, most likely. You'll need to install that store procedure, and I'll put a link in the video down below. So you can go get a, a source of that get all table sizes uh, store procedure. What the store procedure is going to do is going to query that database. It's going to look at all the tables and it returns a list of all of the tables. Now, what it also returns is the number of rows, the size that's reserved, the size it's using, uh, the index size and the unused size of each of those database tables. Now, it, it's not sorted in any um, meaningful way, unfortunately. What I'll tend to do, though, is I'll take a look at this and just kind of scroll down through. Let me see if I can make this bigger. I probably can't, or I don't know how to offhand. So unfortunately, you're not going to get a zoom on the uh, the sizes there, but that's all right. Uh, basically, what I do is I look through the database list or the table list here, and I, I start to look for tables that maybe are abnormally large. Now, in this particular database, what I'm going to find is the, uh, in, in this case, on line 97 or row 97, we've got the exceptions table. That table currently has 452 records, two, uh, 2,500 uh, kilobytes there of... Uh, uh, of the reserve size. So the exceptions table, the event log table, the schedule history table, those are the tables I'm typically looking for to see if they're abnormally large. Now you can also use this, this uh, store procedure to see if there are other tables that are large. Within this site, the uh, engage publish module provides most of the content or uh, pretty much all of the content on the site. It has almost 6,000 records in it in the article versions table. So you can see it's almost 22 megabytes of, uh, of size in the database right now. And 
if there were any other table that, that were that big, I'd probably be a little concerned. I would start to look into why, um, because it's my site. I built that module when I was back with Engage Software and I, I continue to use it. I have a lot of blog content and posts that are out there. So I'm, I'm not concerned about the size of that particular table. But if it was a table that I wasn't aware of or wasn't sure of, I would dig into some of the details as to why that table had so many records and, and so much content in it. Now, if we scroll down, you can see there's an, a publish item version table. Same thing. It's also part of Engage Publish. There's item version settings uh, and version tags. So there's just a lot of records um, that have built up over the last 20 years in this particular database. So as of right now, those don't really concern me. But that that uh, store procedure is great for you to take a look at and, and super useful if you want to just kind of get a health of the size of your database tables. Now, one thing I also like to do is I'll come in and I'll run this particular SQL query that I'm going to type out here on the screen. And that is select count from vent log. And I'm actually in it's select count one. I'm going to do select count one from event log, from exceptions, and I'm going to do it from the scheduled history table. So this will give me a, a count of all three of those tables and the rows inside of those tables within this local DNN database. And this is something that you can run on pretty much any version of DNN. I think the exceptions table maybe wasn't around prior to maybe version 7.4. So if you're on an older version, upgrade, you're way out of date and you should upgrade. Um, but if you're on a newer version, you should have all three of these tables. So within here, I will also look to see how many records are in these tables. Now, the event log table is, if I switch over here, I've got the, um, I've got my, my local, my personal website up and running already. If I go under the manage section of the persona bar under, at least in my site, it's called admin logs. In yours, if you're on a, new, if you're on a more recently installed version of DNN, it may be a different name. What you find though is you've got the, the logs here. And this is essentially returning all the results of that portal, I'm sorry, that event logs table. So from here, I could actually clear this out or in SQL, I can, I can run another script, which we're gonna open up here in a minute, and it'll clear this table out. It will clear the exceptions table out, and it will clear the schedule history. Now, the schedule history can be found if you go under the settings node of the uh, persona bar and go to scheduler, and then there's a history tab there. So schedule history keeps a record of all of those events or tasks that run within DNN itself on, on the, the job processes that, that occur. So I personally like to come in and clean those out every once in a while. Right now, 328 records, 452 records, 402 records, not super concerning, uh, not a lot, but I've, I've seen portal or uh, websites, DNN sites that have millions of records in the event log, and that can cause all sorts of performance issues, uh, database size issues, et cetera. So what I like to do is come in, and, and after I've kind of reviewed it, made sure that the errors aren't uh, obnoxious or obscene or something that I need to address, I'll come in and I'll actually truncate all three of these tables. Now, typically you would just come in and say, okay, run a, a script called truncate table event log. But what's gonna happen when I try to run that is I get an error that there's a foreign key constraint on the event log table. So there's a foreign key from event log to exceptions. There's also an exceptions events table. So I can't just truncate those tables anymore like you used to be able to do early in, in the early days of DNN. So in, what you need to do or what you should do is run a SQL script that will do that for you. I've already downloaded that one of those SQL scripts. Let me go ahead and open that up. I'll put a link down below in the uh, in the comments or in the notes here for the video, the description for the video, uh, with a link to this SQL script. The SQL script is managed by DNN Work, uh, Sebastian Leupold out of uh, out of Germany. Basically, there's a, a large section of comments here at the top, and then some SQL that will get executed. What it does is it goes out and checks for a, a DNN version adds a actually for sorry creates a version function first from there it then checks to see what version you're on if you're on version 740 or greater it will go through and and drop a constraint that foreign key on the database it will then execute the the um excuse me it'll execute a truncate on exceptions exception events and event log and then after that, it goes back and it adds that foreign key constraint back into the database. So it does not touch the uh, schedule history table, but it does clear out exceptions, exception events, and the event log table. So when I open that, 
Now, because I opened that here inside of SQL Server Management Studio, I can't just execute it. If I were to try to execute it, first thing I need to do is connect it to, why won't it let me do that? Try to connect it to a database, which it won't. So let me try just copying that over into this window that already has a connection going. If I try to execute the script, it's gonna throw an error. Now it throws errors because of these object qualifier and database owner tokens which exist within the script. So Sebastian wrote the script so he could easily take it, copy and paste it or load it into the SQL console from within DNN itself. I personally like to use SSMS. So what I need to do is I need to do a search and replace for these tokens. So I'm gonna replace this database owner token with a DBO and a period. Go ahead and do a search and replace for that. And then I'm gonna replace the object qualifier token with nothing, an empty string. That will configure this SQL script to run against my, my local database, or in this case, my remote database, um, that is configured to have a DBO as the database owner and no object qualifier configured in the web config in the DNN website. So now if I go ahead and run that, it's gonna go out, it's gonna drop that constraint. It's gonna truncate those tables, it adds a constraint back in. And if I undo a couple of things here, we can go ahead and do our select counts again from event log and exceptions. Now we get an event log of one and exceptions of zero. We still have some schedule history. Well, why do we have schedule history? Because our script that we just ran doesn't clear the schedule history. So let's go ahead and just do that ourselves. So I'm gonna do truncate table, schedule history, run that. And now if I execute the SQL again, I get a count of one, zero, and zero. So just some super simple basic maintenance that I like to do. I'll, I'll oftentimes do it once a month just to go in and check my DNN databases, see if there's anything out of the ordinary, if the sizes are, are, are gonna cause any problems or concerns. If you have limited disk space on your SQL server and your database starts to take up all that disk space, you can have all sorts of performance issues on the server itself. Other databases can be impacted by that. So this is just something I like to do regularly, check things out, make sure my, uh, my databases are healthy. So this is Chris Hammond. Uh, like I said, this is the first time I uh, put my face in the videos. Let me know what you think. Um, and Will Stroll, please keep your comments to yourself if you're gonna be rude. Um, I hope to be back here with uh, additional videos here in the next couple of weeks. And uh, if you've got any thoughts or ideas on what you'd like to see in the videos, please add that in the comments below. Be sure to like and subscribe. And uh, I'll see you next time.